always like the beam. And with that, the angst, the anger, the disappointment comes to an end. The Sacramento Kings are going to the playoffs. Hello, everyone. Welcome to King Central Offseason Review. I'm Kyle Draper. And what a time it is to be a Sacramento Kings fan. The team ending its postseason drought, making the playoffs for the first time in 17 years. And one of the architects, one of the guys most responsible for this resurgent for your Sacramento Kings is GM Monty McNair. And Monty joins me right now. Monty, first of all, congratulations on such a great year. 48 wins a Pacific Division title, executive of the year for yourself as well. How would you uh, put into words that magical run last season? It was just a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, you come into the year with certain expectations and hopes, and uh, we we achieved a lot of them. And uh, appreciate you, um, you know, mentioning the executive of the year, but we had the unanimous coach of the year. We had two All-NBA players. Uh, we had somebody break the rookie three-point record and on and on. It was a list of achievements for this group. Now comes the hard part. we got to build on that uh, and get even better. With that being said, what's the difference between this offseason versus previous ones where, you know, you didn't accomplish what you wanted to, there wasn't as much hype and buzz, maybe some more work to be done. How is this offseason different? I think in past offseasons, we knew what we had wasn't fully working. And uh, we've had in previous offseasons a coaching search, uh, some big trade signings. You know, I think coming into this year, we at least had on the table we can bring a lot of this group back because we achieved a lot and we have guys that can continue to grow. We, we certainly brought in some new pieces, but bringing back a lot of the guys that got us to 48 wins to that three seed to that division title uh, was something that, you know, we didn't have the, the luxury of considering in years past. You know, it was a tough, hard fought series against the Golden State Warriors goes to a game seven. Did the Warriors teach us anything or did you learn anything about the team from that series and, and maybe something you wanted to address in the offseason roster wise? You'd all say coming in, you're, you're playing the defending champions, right? You break the playoff drought, you, here you go, defending champions, but that just shows you what the playoffs is about. There's no easy outs. I'll, I'll point to two things, one on each side. Game six, we go in, we're down 3-2, we go into Chase Center, defending champion, hostile territory, and our guys play a phenomenal game um, and really respond to the moment, uh, force the game seven. On the flip side, we come home, game seven, stick around for a while, and then a certain guy on the other team uh, goes for a big game, and I think that teaches us that we still got some work to do. You gotta learn how to win in the playoffs, and that's gonna be our next challenge, our next step. Uh, I thought the guys really responded well going to seven games. Winning those first two games at home will always be a memory I'll cherish. We're hoping next year that we're playing further into April and May. How do you value a, a seven game series, what you learn versus what you saw with your eyes 82 games during the regular seasons? How much do you react to what actually happened in the playoffs versus what happened during the full regular season? There's certainly a lot of differences in, in the playoffs. Uh, the, the intensity ratchets up. You're playing one team multiple times in a row the amount of preparation and, then, and adjustments that go into that is just it's just a different thing and that said we got to spend 82 games putting ourselves in position where we have a, a game seven at home that, that's a great place to be uh, where we can have home court uh, further on in the playoffs but we also got to learn how to play in the playoffs that experience is only gained one way you got to get there we had I, I think six or seven guys make their playoff debut last year uh, we obviously have some champions like Harrison Barnes, but we have some guys who, uh, despite success in their careers, had not made the playoffs. And so getting that experience, getting that you know high intensity, getting all seven games, point to Keegan Murray, who struggled a little bit coming out of the gate in the, in the playoffs, was one of our best players in the last few games. So guys that, you know, they, they need to gain that experience. Um, I hope they've gained it uh, because, you know, it's going to come fast and furious the next time we're there. Did you have set goals for this offseason in terms of roster construction? And did you accomplish those goals? Our goals are always the same. And you know, our job's never done. It's not like, all right, it's over. Let's see what happens. This thing is always uh, you know, moving and changing. We want to set ourselves up for success this year. We got to build upon what we what we did last year. Uh, but we also, we want to be in the playoffs for a long time. And so we have to have a little bit of a longer view and look three, four, five years out. And I think this year we are able to bring back a lot of the guys that helped us, 
add some new pieces that can help us and set ourselves up uh, for at least the chance to improve uh, down the road and make this an extended runway in the playoffs, which, you know, is what we want to do. What we all hope for, no doubt about it. Did you uh, circle some specific areas of need and, and could you share those with us uh, this off season? You know, I think last year at this time we had changed over half our roster, if not more. Uh, and so we had a new coaching staff uh, and now, you know, we're a year in, but there's still room to grow there. So uh, I think we, we saw the deadline. We did a lot of that this summer, letting that continuity, that familiarity continue to grow. You know, at the same time, we, we know we got to maintain our offense at least, uh, which was a big uh, emphasis for us as far as what drove winning last year. But we, we got to improve on the defensive end. The good news is in the playoffs, we saw that. We saw that our defense could step up. We defended, I thought, very well. Uh, for most of that series. So we know we can do it. If we can improve our defense, keep our offense where it is, or even better, uh, which is uh, you know high, high expectations for Coach Brown and Coach Triano and the rest of the staff to take the best offense of all time and make it better, but that's what we strive to do. We do that, maintain uh, or improve our defense. We're gonna, we're gonna be uh, in the picture to do a lot of big things. I wanna talk about some individual players and, and deals you guys got done this off season. You guys decide to restructure and extend DeMontis Sabonis. Obviously he's coming off a great year, third team all NBA. Why was it important to get that deal done now? Why did you want to get it done now? Well, anytime you can lock in a, an all NBA guy, uh, you do it. You know, for us, it was it was just one of the things that we looked at that we could maybe achieve this summer. And if we could and do it in a way where we can keep the team, uh, you know, as good and, and hopefully improve it, and set ourselves up where we've got Domas on our team for the foreseeable future, that would be great. Uh, our, our group did a great job of trying to figure out how we could do all that. And I think we were able to you know, really actually improve our depth, bring back uh, most of all our starters, most of our key pieces, uh, add some new ones, and then you know, set ourselves up four or five years down the road. You know, we've always said we want we want Domas here ever since we traded for him, and we want to build a really good team around him. And uh, we're, we're on that pathway, but we got to keep Keep the uh, keep the team in a position where we can maneuver in case we need to improve in a certain area or there's a, a big strike uh, opportunity for us. What have you seen from him in terms of leadership? And I'm not talking on the court or any during the season, but I know guys, you know, they get together in Napa as a team, you know, work out and do like. And Domas is there. You know, what have you seen from him leadership wise in the off season? Well, Domas, you know, I mentioned Harrison Barnes. We had Matthew Delvadova last year as, as guys with championship pedigrees. But Domas, back, back to college and, and uh, his time in the NBA, has been in the playoffs as well. And um, I think when he came here, um, you know, he's been around the league so long, you don't realize how young he is, but he, he kind of grew into more of a leadership role. First of all, his intensity jumps off the page. And um, when your best player, one of your one of your top guys is, is doing that, the other guys follow suit. He, he's not afraid to put his arm around guys. We saw him do it literally with, with Keegan coming off the court, uh, with Davion coming off the court. You know, we brought in Chris Duarte this off season who they, they had a great relationship, chemistry on the court uh, in Indiana. So we're hoping to see that here. You know, he leads by example for sure but he also leads with his voice uh, and you know with his actions and um, somebody that our guys look up to. You brought up Chris Duarte and, and his chemistry with DeMontis Sabonis there in Indianapolis uh, with the Pacers. Those two were together you know for half a season. Why did you want to bring Duarte in? Was it specifically what you saw what he was able to do how he was able to work off at Domas or did you see a little bit more as well? Just one piece we, we've uh, you know our our evaluation of players starts before they get in the league. And, and even though we only draft maybe one, two, three guys in a given year, our group's doing work on those guys for years before that and then certainly during the draft process. So that was really the, the, the base for us uh, on Chris and we, somebody we liked in the draft and had been tracking. The fact that he's played with Sabonis uh, and had success, you know, certainly uh, added to, to that comfort uh, level there. But, you know, somebody with size, with shooting, with the ability to defend, uh, can make a play. You know, I think he's going to fit in with, with how we play on both ends of the court. And, um, you know, he's going to have to fit in with some other teammates besides Domas, but we think he will. Harrison Barnes, he was a free agent a after this season, but you guys wrapped him up pretty quickly. Was there ever any doubt that you wanted to bring Harrison Barnes back? We all know what Harrison brings uh, to this team. And uh, it was it was great to see specifically Harrison and De'Aaron be a part of the group that 
that finally broke that drought. Those guys have been here for, for years and, and put in the blood, sweat, tears. As a champion, as a, as a veteran, as somebody who can play in so many different types of games, he's got size, he's got athleticism, he can shoot, he can defend, he can rebound. Uh, and as our team continues to evolve, Harrison just kind of fits in and makes us better in, in any of those scenarios, whether we're playing small and he's got to defend a bigger guy. Sometimes he'll he'll go and guard the point guard for us. Some games he'll score 30, some games he'll dish out five assists, some games he'll get 10 rebounds. So what Harrison brings there, and then I think the ultimate professional, uh, not a better guy for, for all our young guys to look up to and learn from. In your role, I would imagine you hear a lot of noise, talking heads, people on social, so-called experts. How do you tune that out when making decisions like bringing the Harrison Barnes back or some of the other decisions you've had to make? Well, the good thing is you, we, we can try to win the press conference. That feels good for a day. Um, but, you know, ultimately all anybody's saying is we want, we want you to win. So all the moves that people liked or didn't like in our first three years, uh, once we made the playoffs, people people loved it all, good or bad. So, you know, our, our group does a good job uh, of tuning that out. We, we get into a room, we turn off the TVs, we maybe don't turn off Twitter fully, but uh, you know, our, our guys, you know, we, we're, we're confident in what we're doing. Uh, we're willing to place bets on uh, players or moves that we feel good about. And, uh, you know, we're not gonna bat a thousand, but, uh, we continue to put those those bets in the right spot and we're gonna end up in a good place. You're probably one of the few general managers who actively engage with fans on social media. I mean, you do Q and A's at times. Do you get a kick out of that? Why do you do that? Well, it's uh, you know ultimately about the fans, and if you're not having fun doing this, especially in a season like we just talked about, where where things are going well, uh, you have to enjoy the highs because the lows can get low. The fans are in a lot of ways just the lifeblood of of what we do, and you know I mentioned Game One, you know coming in and, and that place Golden One obviously sold out, but completely packed with 25, 30 minutes to go before tip off. I, I enjoy it personally. If I, I think some fans do as well, so a little bit of giving back, but. Uh, uh, I love to to get out and yeah. and hear what the fans are saying and you know let them know a little bit about me and our group and what we're what we're working on. California Classic. Our guy Keegan Murray goes off for 41 points. Murray. Working on Hawkins. Oh, step back three. Give them some love as Keegan Murray goes right hand. What impressed you about that outing and the growth that we're seeing from Keegan, even though it's just the summer, even though it's just the off season? I think the cool thing we've seen with Keegan is we studied him in the draft um, two drafts ago, not heavily recruited out of out of high school. His first year at Iowa. Uh, he comes off the bench behind a, a really good Iowa team and, and figures out a way to help them win at that point. Then next year, his job is to lead the team and he leads the nation in scoring. He comes to to us and we have two guys that end up being all NBA. We have a champion, Harrison Barnes. We have a guy who just been to the conference finals and Kevin Herter. And he slides in as the fifth starter and says, I guess I'll just make 200 threes to help this team. I'll defend everyone from point guards to, to power forwards, even some centers. But we also know Keegan can continue to grow. And uh, it may be a little hard to do that when you have the clutch player of the year handling the ball for us a lot when you've got uh, Domas who's putting up double doubles, triple doubles nightly. And so Coach Brown challenged Keegan and said, I want you to grow your game this summer. And one thing I want you to do is play a couple games in summer league where you could be the guy. And I want you to go in transition and dunk on somebody, which he did. He checked on the second yeah. possession of the game. Oh, oh. You know, Keegan being Keegan, he just comes out and drops 70 plus in two games. And 
says, yeah, coach, I got that. I think he's probably the, the one player I'm most excited to see in terms of growth and, and, you know, what he added to his package. How key is he, would you say, in his development to the future of this franchise and, and getting wins on the floor? The sky's the limit for him, and I think we, we've seen that in so many different areas, uh, as I mentioned, dating back to his college and, and his first uh, year, year plus here in the pros. And the more that he can do for us on the court, uh, you know, the better it's going to be for us. Tell me about Sasha Vezenko. Off, the international man of mystery. I tell you that the hype around this guy, Kings fans, they're on the app, they're watching them, they're on the web watching them, their laptops, their phones. Tell me about him and, and what do you think he'll uh, contribute to the team this season? Well, I'll start with he's the EuroLeague MVP. And what that means <laughs> is uh, the best league outside of the NBA in the world is the EuroLeague, and he was just named the most valuable player there. His team uh, had incredible success uh, both in their domestic league and the EuroLeague over in Greece. He's an incredible shooter. He's got great feel. He can pass the ball. He can he can cut. He'll be a great fit, I think, in our offense defensively. Somebody who's improved as a rebounder. Just one of the higher IQ players that, that we've seen. And, uh, and lastly, I'll just say just somebody who's a winner. He wants to win. Uh, he cares deeply about about that. Was it a priority to get him over here this season? Well, we always we're always just looking to add talent however we can, and uh, obviously somebody who you own the rights to. I think he's at an age and a time in his career where it makes sense, and you know a, a fit within our system. So when all those things line up, and then you know the other part of the equation is is his interest, and I think you know credit to to our group and the the way we play, the success we had this year, um, I've got to think that those played a part as well. All right, so you had the number 24 overall pick in the draft. He did some wheeling and dealing, slid all the way back to 38, then moved up, got Colby Jones out of Xavier at 34. What can you tell me about him? Yeah, Colby, uh, we saw a little bit in summer league, uh, just a two-way guy, another guy who can pass. He can, his, his shot is improving, uh, but really hangs his hat on his defense. Um, just a very versatile player. As we continue to, to kind of build our team, we're seeing how these guys with playmaking aspect, um, the, the high basketball IQ, when you put a bunch of those guys on the court, um, it's not just an additive, but maybe an exponential gain. Jalen Slauson out of uh, Furman, a five-year guy, a guy with experience. How can he help the team? Yeah, Jalen's going to have a little bit more of a transition uh, coming from Furman, but you know, an incredible win in the in the tournament, uh, last second three, uh, always fun. But you know, he was a big part of their winning. He's going to have to slide up a little bit, um, you know, guard some some more perimeter-based guys, uh, and we saw that in, in summer league. But another guy with playmaking ability, with the ability to uh, rebound, defend multiple positions. You know, all our guys, whether they're playing for Sacramento, for Stockton, uh, in summer league, in the preseason. Whenever they're out on the court wearing that Kings across the chest, we want them to continue to improve and uh, you know just find a way to help us win. You know, you mentioned the sour taste in, in the mouth. Do you think the loss to the Warriors, especially in the fashion at home game seven, are you hopeful that's motivating, you know, not only players, coaches, but everybody in the organization? Is that the hope that, you know what, sure, we made it, it was a great season, but there's still work to be done? Yeah, absolutely, and I think most of our guys do. I think what our guys also realize, though, is nothing's taken for granted in this league. You know, we were 48 wins, the three seed, the, you know, Pacific Division title. It, we got to go right back from square one. You know, a quick story, my, my four-year-old, I was trying to explain to him, that yeah, you start the next season at zero and zero. And he's like, oh, we're not in third place anymore. No, we're not. The, the West is going to be tough. And we got to put in our work right now uh, in the preseason and through all 82 games so that we can be in position to A, make the playoffs, you know, B, have home court, uh, hopefully in, in more than one round, uh, and then, you know, advance and, and be playing deep into May and June. So yes, we would like to talk about reaching the second round, the, the conference finals, eventually the finals, but we first got to talk about how do we get back to uh, at least the success we had last year, if not more, because that's going to be difficult. What do you make of the moves uh, the Western Conference made this offseason, whether it's 
you know, Marcus Smart now in Memphis. You can look at, you know, Bradley Beal coming to the Western Conference, CP3. Where do the Kings stack up now? You know, we're hearing all these big names and it seems like we're keeping that steady measured approach. Uh, where do the Kings stack up? I think this is going to be my 17th year in the West and there has, it, it's always tough. <laughs> right. Every year, anytime you think it, it's maybe, you know, gonna take a step back, uh, it's right back there. So it's going to be, as always, it's always going to be a fight. Um, and, uh, you know, look, those teams, different teams are doing different things to try to make their team better. Uh, we have the benefit of, I think, a relatively young, deep, uh, hungry team. And that's going to be how we're going to, you know, make our foray into the, into the West. And last year, that served us well. Uh, but now we're gonna have a little more of a target on our back. Teams that are, are gonna look at us and say, man, that was the three seed last year. We gotta go bring our A game. And they're gonna have to do it night in, night out. And uh, you know, we're gonna have to fight through some more adversity this year. We had a, a very uh, dreamlike run last year. It's not always gonna be so smooth. One thing I've continued to talk about is how our team, even if it's not the first time, they continue to rise up to those challenges and, um, and fight through those things. But it's, it's only gonna get harder. You know, the West, the West and just like us, everybody's trying to get better. Um, and you're just gonna have to try to fend them off. Lastly, Monty, what would you say to fans who are gearing up for the season, they're ready? You know, we're looking forward to, to what this team is gonna look like. You know, we're excited. We, we think we have a group of guys that, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna put in the work they already are. We, we know we have a big challenge ahead of us uh, because as we talked about, the West is very tough. But we think we got uh, a very talented, very deep, smart, focused team that is going to take any challenge that, that comes at us. You know, I know Golden One's going to be rocking for us. And, uh, you know, look, our goal is our goal is to not just make the playoffs again, uh, but, you know, let's win a round, let's win two rounds, let's go to the finals, let's eventually win a title, and that's our goal here. Monty, I appreciate your time, man. Thanks so much for jumping on King Central off-season review. Looking forward to the season October 8th, that first preseason game, man. I'll see you then. Can't wait.